Can you guess who this is, dear viewer? Artist Journal, February 20th, 2023, broadcasting to the world from Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Artist reporter on the scene. As I keep saying, a term which we will go into at a future point. This is X Copy, ladies and gentlemen. This is X Copy, who has not released work recently and released a flurry or a few works in the last few days. And this is one of them. So, I mean, it's pretty nice. Uh, it seems to be abstract. Again, we we're just talking about this on Friday with Uxine's piece, The Sampling. And, you know, speaking of Uxine, it's like the sampling across layers. And speaking of Uxine, it's almost like Uxine had the X copy moment. And it's almost like, and this may be totally accidental, but it's almost like X copy is having a bit of an Uxine moment here. Uh, I mean, obviously, Uxine is hugely influenced by X copy. And X copy was first. Uh, so that should be taken into account. But, I mean, this is how it happens with artists, is they do. I mean, you see a great work by a great artist, and you are influenced. I mean, I'm out and like, oh, I need to start sampling more across layers. This looks great. That's how it works, right? So, anyways, cool work. I mean, let's see what this went for, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome back, everybody. Uh, there's an offer for one transferred to Anonymous, so no idea what this went for. This is my favorite, I think, of the, of the batch. They're all quite beautiful, though. Let's just take another look. And shout out to X Copy. Shall we, shall we do a shout out to X Copy, who actually liked, I'll, I'll get onto it in a second, liked one of my, my open editions. So that was like a, a surprise and a joy on my weekend there. So that was awesome. So anyways, these went, like, I mean, look at this. So this one here, just so like, and people, this is the first time, other than the right click save as, I think this is maybe the first time we've actually looked at X Copy's work. And X Copy is probably the most renowned uh, artist in the NFT space. Okay, so just so everybody is aware. Uh, so here, here is his page on Super Rare. And so he just released a few. And for example here, this was released, I think I brought it up here, Luxury Microwave Mash. This was released uh, on February 17th. And this was transferred to Anonymous. But let's look here. Uh, this was sold for $425,000, okay? So for those that aren't aware, yeah, this is what's going on over in the digital art scene, okay? You, and like, you know, no show required. Uh, you mint your work. And if you have a reputation and putting out beautiful works like Xcopy is doing, this is what can happen. So, of course, Xcopy is pretty much at the top of the heap here, but nevertheless, I mean, 250 ETH, half a million dollars. So Xcopy can go buy a very nice house with, it, with the art that he produced in the last, you know, however long this took, right? Here's another one, and this was also transferred. There's an offer for 52 ETH uh, that, and just transferred to Anonymous. So pretty interesting. This is more what I'd consider closer to classic X copy. I mean, and to be fair, and I look at how beautiful, I love X copy's website. Let me just say that because of the simplicity. Uh, click here, super rare. Here's for links. Here it takes you to Twitter. And here's an about page. And the about page will give links to all the little series and, you know, how to buy, what is NFT art. That's interesting. He probably gets a lot of people that are like, I want one, but I don't know what to do. And he just probably says, go here. And then conveniently, here are all my links. Okay, so smart. Okay, so anyways, let me just bring that up. So yeah, so that happened. So kind of a massive drop from X copy in the last few days. And again, looking at the work, this is what I want to look at here. This isn't entirely new, this sampling of kind of hard-edged uh, pixelation. It's even got a bit of a Hasdrubal waffle feel to it, actually, when you look at this, playing with those kids' programs and just sort of swinging the, what might be a mouse cursor. Maybe it's a, who knows, maybe it's a 
a pencil, digital pencil, who knows, but almost just like swinging a mouse cursor around. That has Drupal, there are Hasdrubal waffles that also really have this quality. And I think it's gorgeous because it kind of brings about a, a true kind of expressionism in digital art. Again, I use that term for Hasdrubal waffles work. There's a kind of reminds me of like kind of the expression, German expressionists or whatever kind of expressionists, abstract expressionists. Right. There's a looseness here and that looseness people particularly love because there's a contrast between digital, which is so kind of planned and thought out before and so kind of modular. And then once you kind of free yourself of that in the digital sphere, uh, it creates some pretty darn cool effects. I mean, again, it's tempting to call these textures, even though this is two dimensional. So that is interesting. And finally, I did want to show this because you go, you might say, oh, is this like uh, going far from this style over here? It's kind of hard edge sampling. What I think is sampling across layers. It could be something different. Um, but if you go back and I did, there is quite far back actually, you do see that hard edge sampling here. And I think even the right click save as guy has you know some pixels, so it's not entirely new or anything either. So anyways, just uh, FYI, cool works. People love the flashing, <laughs> people. And I'll tell you just a final sort of thing on this and then we'll move on. Um, what I like about the flashing in Xcopy as well as Uxine is how you can look at it. It's not, and I actually really like Dr. Version where he had the hyper aggressive flashing. I think there's actually something to be said for that. But conversely, there's actually something to be said for flashing that's a little bit easier to consume. Like I'm not kind of overly concerned right now that the viewer is going to freak out because the flashing is kind of gentle and there is something to be said for that. It kind of creates its own aesthetic quality. And just finally, I mean, when you look up close, it's tempting to look up very close on these, isn't it? I mean, how oh, look at this. Now, this is something, I'm glad we did this, because this is something I've been meaning to do more of on this show, which is to go close up. I think there's total value. Look at the value we've just created for this show in looking at things close up. I mean, this is, this is where it all happens, you might say. So again, what I would call sampling, this is my favorite tool, the magic wand. If you want randomization, in the digital art sphere, I suspect here we have sampling, sampling across layers, magic wand, sampling across colors. Who knows? Anyways, looking really interesting. And up here, you see the mechanics of the flash here, or one of the flash flashing things, which is this just kind of pixelated thing, which just kind of goes on and off. So pretty fascinating. Half a million dollars. Thank you. Uh, continuing on, so thank you and big thank you again to, it made my weekend, Xcopy gave me a like, <laughs> which in this business is a big deal, on my open edition on Twitter there. So I have joined the parade, as I said, of the open editions on Object. And so this is, thank you, 67 minted, which is thrilling for me, for the MC $2.02 and two tes, uh, cents, MC202 there reference and it's open for another two days so you can get your cool little 303 sketch long overdue and I have a few more in the pipeline this one is pretty fun and yeah so there you have it thank you everybody for buying it means a lot um a few comments that i'm going to run through here jaiju adrian would you take a bit would you talk a bit about AI art, your thoughts on it? Perhaps you already covered in another episode. If so, could you link, please? Specifically, AI art, AI art that has no human inter, inter, intention or interaction once created by the machine. So what we call raw AI, I believe uh, Jaiju is referring to. Great show as always. Thank you, Jaiju. So people who've been watching this show since September, when we first tackled Strange Things Thug Lord, might laugh at this because we have gone deep, deep, deep into the AI uh, discussion. And there is a lot to be said. And so it's hard for me to sum up. I mean, this is a quick show here that we're putting together. But what I would actually recommend, and uh, I think on Wednesday for the Twitter spaces, it's I'm doing a, 
this is what I'm thinking. And I think we may even have some AI people that were interested in showing up in this discussion is where are we with AI? It's basically been almost a year now since we've had these mainstream tools and AI people can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, where are we with AI? So that's what we're going to do on Twitter Spaces. So that would probably really bring you up to date. A lot of the things that we've been talking about, and there are other episodes, and I'll, I will, uh, I'm going to talk more about AI art, and I will point you in those that direction uh, when we kind of have an AI feature, so to speak. And so I'm on it. And for starters, though, it's a big discussion. And for starters, we can start. You can start with Twitter Spaces, 9:30 Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, every Wednesday. And this one will be on AI. Uh, I need to talk to Runetune about that and get him to sign off. But we are. That is the the idea. Speaking of Runetune, on signatures. While I agree, it is a case by. So speaking of signatures on digital work, and I didn't see an X copy signature, for example, on the recent work. Uh, while I agree it is a case-by-case -case basis, I still think there's no better signature than strong artwork. I'd rather not see an, a signature. To me, it's overstated and distracting, even if it is well implemented into the artwork. It's, it starts to feel like graffiti, where the artist puts their name all over their work. Nothing against street art. I used to be a street artist myself. Also, I totally get it that you're happier having your own show with total autonomy. Yeah, the pirate ship. Uh, rather than working with any huge institution that might taint your unadulterated perspective and voice. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, e exactly. Uh, thanks. Yeah. And again, like, who doesn't want to do, uh, it, I'm all for the temporary collabs. That sounds fun and great with institutions. I think it'd be really uh, great for everyone. Uh, but anyway, so continuing on. Thanks for a great show. Appreciate you staying on the pirate ship, not in the museum. Uh, this was interesting uh, from Skomra. I mean, crypto art, not just for the art. I really love the art, though, but also because we don't need gatekeepers or central authorities. Yeah, so there is something to the ethos of the pirate ship and to the crypto. Yeah, and that's to me, that's like one of the really kind of uh, sedu seductive aspects of crypto from a just purely intellectual perspective is this idea of decentralization and gatekeepers because uh, it seems at its best, it could bring about maybe a more just world. And I think we see that in the digital art space, which is people who wouldn't have been given the opportunity by virtue of geography, class or social connections are now having the opportunity to sell their art and do well. So that is because of the crypto technology. So, yeah, I, I totally with you, Skomra. And finally here from uh, Agor, last week you talked about the Gerhard Richter movie. It was the Daniel Richter movie, by the way. It's a Daniel. There is also a Gerhard Richter movie, uh, but it was the Daniel. I want to share documentary movies that are important to me. The Price of Everything about the art market and mechanisms. Marina Abramovich, the artist that is present. And My Rembrandt, movie about Rembrandt's art collector and many players in art market. So yeah, okay, cool. Thank you, everybody. So some Cool comments. Now, just a little bit of uh, discussion here before we jump into the art. I thought we solved this whole, uh, you know, royalty debate for artists, but apparently we haven't. I thought Blur had even, which was one of the bigger marketplaces to remove royalties. I thought they had re-implemented royalties like six weeks ago or something. So this is all kind of a surprise to me. Uh, we're making some big changes today. Let me make this bigger. Uh, open C fee is 0% for a limited time. Moving to optional creator earnings, half a percent minimum for all collections without on-chain enforcement. Old and new, marketplaces with the same policies will not be blocked by the operator filter. So I guess they're now removing them again or reducing them to half a percent. So it makes me, that's the most bearish thing, in my opinion, about the whole NFT art market. Uh, and this whole NFT situation, which is so beautiful right now, I would argue, I mean, more or less, uh, it's like, because this is the thing. If you read any coaching, we talk about the success philosophers here, what I call a branch, unrecognized branch of American pragmatism. If you read any of the success philosophers, as I term them, like Brian Tracy, or, you know, even if you're an Anthony Robbins kind of guy, uh, you know, at the core of you know practical wisdom which is what they teach well which is why i called them a branch of american pragmatists it's just pragmatism how to act 
right? Which actually a lot of us might not have known how to do when we were 15, okay? Uh, at the core of that is values, okay? A discussion we had many moons ago on this program, the importance of values. And the, what makes me bearish is just on a purely big picture, zooming out fundamentals view is if these major platforms lose their values in pursuit of becoming bigger and making more money, uh, that makes me just bearish, just on a fundamental basis. There's nothing immediate that says bearishness, but it's just like uh, a scene without values, what is it? At the core, as these success philosophers say, of the, you know, of you is your values. Okay, that's all there is, you know, at the end of the day. So what, that's how you build a strong personality, is on values. So if OpenSea is going to, you know, lose their values in pursuit of greed or becoming bigger or same with Blur or anyone else, uh, that just makes me bearish. Okay, and that's all I really have to say on that. And here's like some guy, Mendez, uh, Mendez Mendez. Just got my first taste of a seller setting half a percent creator fees for a secondary sale on OpenSea. I thought I was protected as this contract was deployed over a year ago and has on-chain royalties set up. Do I need an operator filter for my contract? Anybody done this? And we see here in what looks like Manifold, there is, okay, on-chain royalties. Remember when we were all rushing to get that done? You know, okay. And then here's his like, you know, 0 0.0003 ETH royalty. And creator earnings, okay, refresh eligibility. So it doesn't seem to be working. This is in OpenSea here. So it's not working anymore. And he even did everything, or she did everything that they uh, wanted, that were supposed to do. And they're still not getting their royalties, you know. And so then, okay, so then we see 6529, we shall win against all odds with art today. This came out like a couple of hours ago. But then NFT Marketplace Blur is a new NFT. This came out in October. So who's backing Blur? Who kind of helped start this whole thing? It was actually, I think it was, was it Lux? Looks Rare? or I think they were maybe the first, or there was another one. I don't want to get it wrong, but some other platform went with zero royalties and Blur followed zero creative roy creator oil royalties. And look at who's behind Blur. Paradigm, 6529, the guy who's saying we're going to do it with art, and Cosimo, Dehoff, Barrett, Crimo. So I don't get it. I don't get it. How do you say we shall win against all odds with art? And then you're basically backing a marketplace that's removing the creator royalties. Like someone please explain this to me. I don't understand. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know. So continuing on, uh, space. Uh, this is fascinating actually. Uh, this is to do with, uh, curation. And remember we were talking about curation. So, uh, space world here curated by space W O A. So this person is doing well is the moral of the story here. I'm hap I'll have to admit my personal expectations for space WOA first drop has been exceeded. We have almost sold 70% of the collection with three running auctions right now. We also have a couple of masterpieces that are available. So let's deep dive into them. So anyway, here is the collection. And I just think it's great. And it, again, it kind of speaks to this uh, curation, the value of curation. And this is really working and foundation is really on to something here. So it's nice to see that continue to work. Continuing on, Sabato. Uh, he is minted on Bitcoin. So that is pretty cool. I agree with Siddhartha's motto that you should try everything once. So I went ahead and inscribed, inscribed an ordinal on the Bitcoin blockchain, ordinal demon, daemon. I think it's cute, but I don't know what to do with it now. And there is the Bitcoin guy and the little daemon. So anyways, uh, yeah, so he has a little uh, explanation here. Ordinals have no royalties or provenance beyond inscription, so I have no incentive to just sell my ordinal daemon. So there's no provenance, interestingly, 
on the Bitcoin NFT, but it was an interesting process. It's like, imagine if Bitcoin is a bunch of big, dumb washing machines that runs on quarters and some quarters have serial numbers and you can doodle on those. But, but at the end of the day, they are still quarters. And if you leave them around, your mom will use them to do laundry. So anyways, <laughs> so yeah, Sabato is not entirely uh, convinced on, uh, on the NFTs on Bitcoin here. So anyways, interesting, very interesting. And the Tez vending machine this Wednesday, February 29th, there is a takeover by Uxine. And look at this. Like, I mean, you can tell Uxine has worked in zines because this is like a beautiful poster that you could have print and put on the street here. This is beautiful. Uh, so anyways, there is Uxine's beautiful work there. February 29th, we release a ghost in the system. 666 exclusive editions in multiple pieces, including one of ones, only available on the machine from the master Uxine. Like, I thought they were joking when they mentioned that the first time, or just kind of... So, whitelisting initially, drop your Tez wallet address and retweet, only 420 spots raffled. Okay, so anyways, that's pretty cool. I might have to join that raffle. Uh, just a, another detail on Hasdrubal Waffle's kid uh, software that he's using. Also, really dig Tux Paint. Every tool makes a unique sound, which makes it very enjoyable. So, Tux Paint is another uh, tool, and it has music with it. <laughs> it has sounds. Okay. Uh, shout out to RJ, who uh, what a mad couple of weeks. So, RJ is wrapping up his computer art series. At this point, I want to thank everyone who supported me as I started out on ETH. So, on Monday, I'm going to airdrop this piece to all those who hold a piece of Ethereum work whether from computer art, the metamorphosis, or the open edition. So if you want a free RJ, uh, pick up one, like an open edition or something. It's probably not that expensive. Uh, so anyways, that's super cool. Thank you, RJ. And continuing on, so Rat Cloaksy. Okay, so he is back. Always good to see him. And with another mysterious work here, and I feel like I recognize the work of this man sitting with the table, but it doesn't... I'm not exactly sure uh, what the reference is there. Maybe someone out there knows. And an interesting, I don't know if I'd call that a bride or a religious figure over here and holding a shark. So a pretty, you know, I'd call it pretty surreal uh, painting from Rat Cloaksy. And let me just zoom in here. Like, I want to show you all the beautiful detail of this artist, this great artist here. Uh, and this was released on object. It is minted, but it is not, uh, it is not, look at how, it is not for sale yet from my understanding. So you can just see like a perfect kind of circle here, but then some nice roughness in here. And it's just quite beautiful. So I hope you're enjoying going on the zoom in. This is something that I've wanted to do more of. And you see, like, look at all the tiny detail here in the eyes. You see that? And if we like zoom out, like look at how much work is in this work here. Okay, it's all it's all been thought through. It's all been covered. It's all been resolved. One might say, for all its looseness. So, pretty fascinating and enigmatic work. And look at the interesting uh, floor here with this kind of sp almost a spray giving us a, another texture. So very cool. So we love Rat Cloaksy here, big shout out, and hope you're doing okay over in Ukraine. Gloomtube with a pretty uh, edgy uh, work on Norfolk Southern. Now, that was a train derailment that happened in the US. Let me just bring this up here. So you see the Washington Post headline here, before Ohio derailment, Norfolk Southern lobbied against safety rules. So, you know, and. Nor Norfolk Southern CEO. So this had to do with a train derailment that looks like it caused some pretty serious issues here. I don't know the entire story, but GloomTube has responded. And for all we know, this isn't too far from GloomTube, for all we know. And so here's the Norfolk Southern, maybe the CEO here uh, with money on the belt. So another kind of darkly satirical work here with blood on the hands and a tie with skulls on it and a melting face, maybe from the chemical explosion. And you see here chemicals in a river and a dark sky full of clouds and a dripping Norfolk Southern <laughs> logo. 
So, I mean, the power of digital art, a real-time response here to what's going on in the world. This, how old is this news story, right? Uh, you know, 23 hours a day ago. That's pretty interesting. You can't do that in the physical art world. Barely. Like, I mean, you'd have to be and like, no, like not on a regular basis, not that quickly. It doesn't work that quickly. But in digital, boom, there's your there's your commentary. Pretty cool. Speaking of Hasdrubal Waffle, commodity. When you stare into a box of fun, the, the fun stares right back at you. So uh, kind of a edgy, hilarious, kind of scary work here a little bit from Hasdrubal Waffle. And again, like I, I almost don't know what to think of a work like this. Um, but I love the experimentation and it's always thoughtful. So that's why I show it here. Uh, edition of three, one is available for 50. I think it's Bridget New York City is selling hers. Uh, has dribble waffle promenade, promenade, modern living. So interestingly, some more kind of flashes that are fairly easy to consume here, which is interesting. Uh, and just a kind of mix of there's a YouTube signal and some money and maybe some crazy, you know, crypto influencer person. And here is someone leaning back in despair a little bit. And so just, you know, ATM, gore, again, mysterious work, modern living. So pretty interesting, if you ask me. Uh, we've got another one, fun, the idea of fun. No fun is in the, my idea of fun, which is no fun, and boxes of no fun to give to each other. And there is a box of fun with that first work we saw from Hasdrubal. So again, these are using kids programs from what I understand. And there's almost the guy in the background. So melting faces getting these wonderful textures that I think these are only, you can only make these in kids programs. You'd never put all this stuff together in Photoshop. So you see the value of using alternate alternate softwares. Here's another interesting piece, Cocktail, Kokomo. So probably a reference to the movie Cocktail with Tom Cruise. And who was, I don't remember the co-star there. I have seen that movie. You might be surprised to know. And so I do know this in Kokomo, of course, was the Beach Boys song that was all the rage when I was in grade five. So that is great. And that is an addition of three. I don't know if Yuri J with an offer and one sold for 15. Others accepted offers of two, so kind of a anarchic, anarchic market there. This was highlighted by San Diego, and this is actually reminiscent of Hasdrubal, some of Hasdrubal Waffles' work, actually. HFDA, Can't Stand Ants. And so this is interesting, almost like a interface of a retro tool, and like, uh, you know, almost reminds you of Byte by Bits interfaces that he sometimes uses for PC Paint 3.1 or whatever the case may be. Anyways, taking different versions of a piece and almost uniting them all in one GIF. Can't stand ants. Buy for 250, I picked one up. Edition of 15. And here is some of HFDA's other work, a fairly new artist, and doing some interesting abstracts here. So maybe that's how Santiago started following. Uh, so very interesting. And here is a work by Santiago that he posted, Good Night with a heart and kind of an interesting piece. I couldn't tell if this was physical or not. It kind of looks physical. Uh, and But you wonder, is this AI? Is it, who knows? I mean, this could be digital drawing and whatnot. So anyways, I thought it was an interesting abstract and I call it an abstract, maybe it's of something, but I thought it was an interesting abstract and you can almost see a face here. So not 100% abstract, but interesting piece. And Purple Drank, uh, who is long overdue, I, I just was thinking to myself, like, where's Purple Drank? I haven't seen anything, but I guess I wasn't getting the notifications. So there is new Il Canto Pepe from, when is this? February 15th, Veritas in Herba. I guess that's Truth in the Fall, Truth in Autumn. And with a guy with a canister and continuing his Canto Pepe series. And this is sold out, low edition of nine. And... Yeah, so Rat Cloaksy there, all sorts of people, Rorich. These are quite collectible, these Pepe works. And he also put out this, what I think is an AI work, really what seems to be referencing the death of Socrates. This is from December 28th. And I'll show you the original painting here in a second, but this looks like AI, again, with the death of Socrates and Jean-Jacques-Louis 
David, I believe, is the artist here. And yeah, Jacques-Louis David, who I believe was an 18th century French painter. I'm not an expert in them, but this is a super famous painting, of course. Sometimes you'll see this on the cover of art books, art history books or philosophy books. And there is Socrates in prison. This, is, this took place in Plato's Phaedo, P-H-A-E-D-O, which, uh, you know, chronicles the death of Socrates. And you can actually go to this place in Athens. It's much smaller and it might be apocryphal. And apocryphal means like it might not be true. Uh, the, uh, the story about where the prison is. Like, I don't know if it's true because I was quite surprised to see, oh, there's Socrates' prison. So it could be apocryphal, uh, Socrates' prison here. Um, but anyways, uh, a very famous, famous scene. And there he's being given the, the hemlock or the poison which will uh, kill him that he's about to take. And everyone is crying and he's saying, don't be so sad, all is well. Here, I'm a philosopher. I, you know, it's a meditation on death your entire life. I'm good. And there's probably the prison guard. So anyway, uh, a quick look, and there is Socrates there. It's nice to zoom in a little bit, isn't it? I think it improves this show. So yeah, and so anyways, this is an incredibly famous scene. And again, you see the relationship here between, you know, arguably literature or philosophy and art. Continuing on, so Cato with a new abstract, it's blooming. Yes, look at these great references here. James Joyce, Ulysses. Yes, so we are, so we are flowers all. James Joyce. So, you know, this scene, as I keep saying, has nothing to apologize for in terms of depth and, you know, philosophical, intellectual rigor uh, to anybody. A contemporary art scene or academia or whatever. I mean, what more do you need? We have references to Socrates. We have references to James Joyce. I didn't even plan that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So anyways, cool work from Cato. Lucas Lejeune. Uh, some interesting abstraction here. So let's just look. Kind of geometric abstraction. It moves. So animated abstract, we might say. Uh, and so, anyway, very interesting work over here from Lucas Lejeune. Uh, Karim Safa with a work, I believe this is a preview, Dune's collection will be finalized with a sandstorm. So very cool. Again, 8-bit or 1-bit in this case, nature. And it works beautifully. So here's a sandstorm and it's just gorgeous to look at. So cool, cool work from Karim. And a work... So another basketball work, and remember uh, Haiti Rocket. I hope I'm pronouncing Haiti's name right. Uh, it sounds like he's all right with it. Either way, uh, Sabato with a reference to the All Star Weekend. And what's funny about this actually is, oh, look at how beautiful that basketball is. I missed that earlier. That basketball is beautiful. And going for the slam dunk. So could pair beautifully in a exhibition room with Haiti, Haiti Rockets slam dunk that we were looking at the other day. That is totally awesome. And what's interesting about this is I was almost introduced to uh, Sabato's work by a reference, I think a year ago, to uh, the All-Star Game. Let me see. Let's see if we can find it here very quickly. And here's Sabato's drawing series. Here it is. You see this? All-Star Weekend, buy for 15. This is like from February 20th, 2022, almost exactly a year ago, right? So he did it again. He did it again. And look, you can still get Sabatos. This is a gorgeous work here, 15 Tezos. Here's some free advertising for Sabato, who totally deserves it. Look how beautiful this is. Made on deluxe paint, again, retro tools, and very cool. Edition of 35, nothing crazy there. Manitol, with a new work, uh, gorgeous. Can't wait to see more of these. Uh, from the Cat Tarot, a brilliant idea here. To me, this is like an instant classic. And so anyways, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sunset and everything, the chariot. So continuing, seventh tarot card is a card symbolizing strength, will, and resolve. Represents overcoming challenges with tenacity, attention, and willpower. All about overcoming obstacles and triumphing through keeping control of your environment. The Chariot. We should read these so that we learn this along the way. I didn't know any of that. Cozy Room. Heart 96 Pixels Light. 
a classic on Tezos here, a classic artist, hasn't released a ton recently, but released a new work here. And interestingly, black and white appears to be on a train and just the experience of being on a subway. And this is an edition of 33 for only one Tezos here, 99 Tezos cents. And for those who might remember here, like this awesome uh, astronomy work here, available for 10, that's pretty reasonable. And I brought up this uh, Halloween work here. So just a really fun and cool artist here, her 96 pixels. So awesome, awesome. And continuing on, we are cruising here, ladies and gentlemen, Pastelay, another favorite artist that I haven't seen for a while. Maybe that's my notifications. So, really cool artist. Just kind of capturing the zeitgeist with with retro, capturing the zeitgeist of AI tools with, uh, you know, retro uh, computers pixelated, kind of done in a you know 3D kind of way with a big eye on it. Computer vision. What do you know about AI 3D animation by Josephine Johnson? So super cool. Buy now for ten, which is the standard price for Pastelay's work. Cool artist. Uh, MCHX and has a new kind of work here. And did I bring up MCHX other work? Yeah, so we know MCHX from these two works we were just looking at and from these beautiful, you know, Rothko-like works. And MCHX actually sent me a message and I brought it here because just referencing the whole Rothko thing, let's see if it's uh, easily accessible. Here it is. <clears throat> and I asked MCHX if I could read this because I think it's just interesting because the works are stunningly beautiful. Uh, I'm really inspired by the color field movement and the ideas of color meditation. I'm trying to develop these ideas using modern mediums, creating a more expanded experience. That's why I love making videos so much. My work is often compared to Rothko's, and I feel that I cannot refuse this, as Rothko was a very big and influential person in color abstraction. But I feel that his works were aimed at immersion in any particular emotion while I try to create an experience that allows a person to detach from emotions and thoughts and immerse oneself to meditative state of color contemplation. In this, I see a significant difference between his work, my work, and his. And if you felt that, that makes me very, very happy. I kind of agree. It's, it is quite different. It's almost back to this idea of, and again, we're talking about these works here, which, you know, the first thing you think of is Rothko, but they are completely different. And especially these ones that move here, again, it's back to this idea of using a ladder and throwing it away. Even if it did, like, you know, come from a Rothko source, let's say, like in your head first, but it's kind of creating a completely different experience as MCHX is sane. So anyways, thank you for the comment, MCHX. Super interesting, and it's just really great to hear from you and really interesting new work here. Looking forward to see where it goes. So look at that. I almost, like this is a JPEG, I believe, but I almost am waiting for it to move and wondering, did it move? Uh, so anyways, yeah, this I believe is a JPEG. Screensavers. Not, not exactly sure though, to be perfectly honest. I'm not sure what this is. I don't see, so anyways, who knows what that is? GLS, uh, interesting. Junk and Terry, KHC, looks like they're putting out a CD album, but a CD album that's almost like a new show, the KHC Report, which sounds incredibly promising. And so anyways, just kind of interesting. Kurt Hustle Advisory, very explicit. And JNK and Terry. So anyways, available for five, edition of 25. Keeping it interesting as ever. Kota Nakazono, five Tezos for another abstract here. Edition of 11. So keeping the exploration going on this kind of, you know, organic shape, morphine or biomorphic shape in the front and uh, contrasting it with something in the background. This time some, you know, rings kind of moving up in a video. So interesting, nice and small. 540 by 675, but it works, right? And X Mortal, once again, with a kind of a glitch work of a lighthouse. So quite beautiful here. Very interesting GIF. 
uh, buy, buy for four edition of 10. And yeah, not so this is on secondary. You'd have to get it. So you'd have to probably run over to get that. Future Chair 8 So. So another new work from the Furniture series, which of course I cannot get enough of. Let's see if we can get it loading up properly here. There we go. So a nice kind of relaxed evening in the Furniture Space Age 70s series. Classic chair combines plush cushions with rigid wood construction to turn your lounging area into the height of both comfort and style. Very cool, did this sell? 150 Tezos, off it goes, very good. Flora Marquez with another illustration here. I like the title, Hangover Sunday. <laughs> so the, the title kind of makes it for me. Uh, so now I understand, and I think a lot of us at one point in our life can relate to this. Uh, Cash, Cash GPT from Rosatio, Digital Collage and Digital Drawing, edition of one, and did this sell canceled listing. So it was listed for 169. Uh, so let's see, maybe not sure what's going to happen there. Anyways, very cool work from Rosatio, edition of one. Maybe you can put an offer in on that. Threesomes, who we haven't looked at too much of Threesomes' work, but like super kind of, I'd say, old school Tezos uh, artist, uh, right up there with uh, Bakra Byram and uh, Young Threeses Grid Ron football. So it's an insert. So plays a lot with the mechanics, I think, of NFTs. So if you own certain, maybe get airdrops and, and you know certain tokens. Like this is a token. So if you earn certain NFTs, maybe you get others for free sent to you. And a lot of mechanics here. And playing with this kind of physical, you see there's physical paint and his trademark is really uh, physical paint on trading cards. So this seems to have like another layer of production on top of it. So, and as you see, all three sims have future utility, digital capture of original painting, gouache on vintage baseball card. So his stock and trade. So very cool, offers of 405 Tezos. So already $450 offer there, transferred probably to previous collectors. Maybe that's the utility. And Ilay, as we go into uh, AI, uh, so Banana Mixtape AI Vanitas, so six hours to go here. And I thought a really interesting uh, series, kind of reminds me of Treza Rodanx kind of joining two unrelated things. So we might call it basic surrealism here. A beautiful, seemingly DALI or AI rendered banana on a beautiful mixtape. I bought this right away. It's an open edition, 31 have been minted, Maybe more, I may have in opened this window previously. So anyways, it is available for another six hours. So you'd have to run over to get it. If you're watching this, Camellia Jador, I love these. These are editions of 12. I thought these were gorgeous, also by Ailey. So she continues to evolve here. Uh, I thought this was a really nice, there's two of them in this series or in this kind of style. And here's another one. And I thought these were great. So only a Tezos for this. Uh, so yeah, I kind of ran over. They go beautiful side by side here, don't they? So great work from Ailey. And what do we have here? Lily Illo, when we expand, told that she was too sensitive, told that she couldn't punch her way out of a wet paper bag and she believed them. So artwork by Australian artist Lily Illo. So great to see her back on the scene. Uh, so interesting kind of fade here. Uh, between the background and the colors. So she's got a few works here. So when we expand, and let's see, they're probably quite large. Yeah, they are 6,000 by 8,000. This is a really cool one. He knew how to knit. Almost has like a modernist feel to it, doesn't it? Uh, so interesting here. And we have another one. This was on Twitter, I love this one. At least they were together. I thought this was beautiful. So. Really nice work here in the AI department from Lily Illo. There's a chance that Lily shows up, I think, on Wednesday, but I don't know that for sure. So, um, but I'm hoping some AI people are gonna come. They messaged me to be on their spaces, which I'm, so, and they mentioned that, I know, so I said I was doing a show on AI this Wednesday, and they, so they might come, or at least someone might come. So that would be super cool. Laundry Blues, uh, Lily Illo. Uh, so another one. So again, kind of has this modernist feel to it, doesn't it? You wonder if modernist paintings are being used as a source, but over here, we're I'm all cool with climb up the ladder, throw it away. I mean, it's its own thing. Influences everywhere. 
And this is from an artist who reached out and just really liked the program, and I'm more than happy to show your work, R. Presti. One of those nights, The Edge of the Known, and here is, uh, it's an AI on top of a digital painting. So just kind of interesting, and I think I brought up their page here. Let me just quickly, yeah, and so they have started uh, recently, they have a couple of pages here on objects, so shout out R. Presti. And another work out of Argentina, I believe. So that's super cool. Uh, Daniel King, artificial Polaroid number five, a Polaroid camera photo using AI. So again, this series has a simple, an elegant simplicity to it. And you see it in this image. It's just really cool, really beautiful. Edition of one, let's see what happens. Sold for 60 within an hour. So that's pretty cool. Or after a little bit of an hour, AI and mid journey. And we've been looking at this artist, Mark Belden, uh, for a while here. And here's just another beautiful work by this artist who I'm just really fascinated by right now. Physical work, gouache on St. Armand paper. And we've also been looking at this artist here, Bruno Miguel Studio. So another one of these rugs or carpets with painting on top. And they're pretty stunning and pretty just really cool to look at. I kind of, it's that contrast between the bright colors and kind of the muted colors in the carpet that really just does it. And you see it all, it's just instantly attractive. And that's your show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me again. And thank you for everything. What a great weekend we had this weekend. Until next time, take care.